Hi, you are watching Cosky Drones. Welcome back. Today I'm going to do a quick comparison between the Parrot and Afe and the Mavic Air. Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So, today, something a bit different. So I'm going to do a comparison on the Parrot and Afe and the DDI Mavic Air. This is not a video saying one is better than the other. So let's get that out of the way before Parrot people start complaining and the DDI people start complaining. I love them both. So, let's do a quick comparison. And all this is going to be is maybe help you make your mind up which one you want to buy out of the two. So they both come with a case like this and the, the controllers don't come in cases, they both are the same that way around. You have to buy a case for the controller. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's what you get. So this is what you get when you buy it, you obviously get the charge and you get one battery. Currently, this is 549 on Amazon, that's today as we stand. This is currently £700 uh, from various people, I think Scanner 699 But you can get this from various people now, Drones Direct and a few places on eBay for 549 refurbed. And that is a DJI refurbishment. It will have marks on it when you get it, but it will be in perfect working order. Which makes them both the same price, but this will not be a new product. So that's a cost issue, possibly out of the way. But if you're buying them new, remember this is going to be more expensive. So, they both have a 4K camera. They're both capable of doing the same kind of shoot, the same kind of shots, but this one has a massive advantage in the fact that you can do this with a gimbal. And this has got around seven minutes more flight time than that. Real world. <coughs> the controllers are similar. This is quite... People don't like this because it's very toy grade. That's just looking at pictures because this thing is not toy grade at all. This is a really nice transmitter to use. It feels lovely in your hand. It's got some weight about it. And the switches are perfect. Very ergonomic, this, to use. You can get to everything dead easy. Similarly on this... If you used to DJI tackle, this is very, very similar. You can, same thing, very ergonomic. Everything's right to hand. They both have follow me mode, and they both have, well, this one's got active track. The main differences between the two. This is a two axis gimbal. <coughs> this is a three axis gimbal. This has, has got sensors, front and rear. And this is a thing called APAS. So it will try and work a route out to get past things to carry on tracking you. There's none of that on this. They both have optical flow underneath. This is more stable in the hover than this is. This is faster than that, in my opinion anyway. And this is very, very good in wind. This is extremely good in wind. Considering this weighs only 300 and something grams, it handles the wind better than the air. That's from my opinion, and I've flown these a lot. <coughs> As I say, I'm not saying which one's better, I'm saying they're the differences. You can live without the gimbal being three. I'm going to put some video footage up at the end of this video, and what you'll see is both quads flying and filming at 2.7k, and both flying. And filming at 4K. They both have around 100 megabits per second image speed. So they're identical on that way. The 4K image is bigger on this than it is on this. I think, in all honesty, the image is better on the Anafe than the Air. But there's very, very, very minor differences. And you'll see when it's flying fast because there is a bit where this is flying quick, you'll see it's, the video will stutter. And it will with this. It, unless you wind your gimbal ridiculously lowly down, you're going to get the same issue. Obviously, of course, with this one, you can't stop that. You can have your gimbal speed really, really slow. But then you can't fly it as fast. You've got to be a bit smoother on the controls. So, image quality... Is very similar. You'll, you can see for yourself, you can make your own mind up when you watch the videos, which I recorded them both in 2.7 and both, both in 4K. They were on different days, because 
wind isn't an issue. The only thing that is an issue is I think there might not be the same kind of sun. But you're, you're going to tell the video. Look at the quality. Look at the clarity on the video more than anything else. Forget the way I was flying it, how quick I was flying it, and if it looks a bit jerky, that's not what you want to be looking at. All that's sorted by the way you fly. Look at the clarity in picture, and they're both very similar. It comes down to, at the end, what you'd rather have in a drone. This is lighter. The portability is about the same. The controllers do virtually the same thing. What I will say is, the range on this is better on this than that. That's a definite. I get better range from on this than I do on that. There's about three or four, two or three hundred meters in it. If I fly it local for where I live, I'm only getting five to six hundred meters, and that is because of the place I'm flying in. Nothing to do with the drone. But on this one, I can still get a kilometer sometimes, but I normally get between eight and nine hundred. So there is quite a difference on that bit. So that's something else you've got to bear in mind that's got active track this has follow me you have to pay extra for the follow me mode it's now 99 pence there's no excuse not to buy it i think the follow me on this is better than the active track on that i'm in a very fortunate position that i own both and i won't sell either i like them both i did have a ddi spark i've got rid of the spark because i'm never going to use it again because it's a similar size to these but it's only got a 10 HP camera and it is a fantastic drone but to me I'm never going to use it again it was just going to stay in its box and that's just a waste so I thought it was someone that can get some use out of it this charges through a USB cable so you don't have to use the charger to the USB slot on the back now they've used that as a selling point <coughs> excuse me I don't actually think it is even the fastest I can get to charge is about an hour and 30 minutes and that's using a fast charger. This charges in an hour. With a DJI charger that comes with it. Battery price, 84.99 and I've just checked today, 84.99. They both come with one battery. But if you're looking at new cost, obviously that is quite a bit more. You've got £150, £150 you get another couple of batteries virtually for this one. People, you might be put off by the fact that this has got no, sorry, this one has absolutely no obstacle avoidance. And, and that is going to be an issue for some people. It doesn't bother me in the slightest, but with this one you know that when you fit return to home it's going to come back and it's not going to hit anything. And especially for you, if you've got AirPass turned on as well, you've got the extra safety feature. You can't do that with this. It really is a decision that no one else can make. The reason I'm making this video is to show you them both next to each other. There's hundreds of comparison videos, but what they're going to tell you is this is better than this and this is better than this. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is they're both really nice. And it, it's up to you what you want to spend your money on. What I would say, this has already dropped in price. It may drop again. But this will drop as well when DJI bring out another product. And the sales of this will have slowed down since the launch of the new Mavic. Pro. Both of them have uh, apps that are similar. This app is Free Flight 6, and the app for this is obviously DJI Go 4. Now, the biggest difference between both of these, and people are put off DJI because of this, is the constant updates. There is a lot of updates. It constantly updates its no fly zone. This has no no fly zone. I actually prefer the fact that this has updates and no fly zones. It's coming whatever you want it or not. This is going to be a thing. The no fly zone thing will have to be brought in and they'll have to bring something into this eventually when the laws change that means it can't fly in certain places. It is annoying that you have to come to update it. So the night before I fly, I have to check it every time. You don't have to do that with a parrot. But again, I personally think this is a good feature. I don't mind it having to update apps at all. I know that's I'm going to go against the crowd there because most people don't like the fact that it updates all the time. But at least I know that they're working on it, they're updating it, they get rid of bugs and problems are being sorted. This has had one major update since I bought it and 
it also was one of the things if you watch my video when I reviewed this I didn't like the fact it had a 20 meter height limit for return to home you could adjust it and it came at back at 20 meters they've upped that to 30 and they've also made it you can go anything you want you can set it for however high you want but the app will default to 30 meters which is much better than 20 but I can set it to 100 if I want the other great thing that this didn't have when it came out is that 1080p and 4K only, it now shoots in 2.7. Another massive thing to me and a massive benefit because I don't always want to shoot in 4K. 2.7 is probably the perfect medium for me so I like to shoot in 2.7, it takes up less room. This one has a 16 gig SD card <coughs> in the bottom here. There have been a lot made about this as well, doesn't bother me in the slightest. But there has been a lot made about it, saying it's a bad design. This comes with 8 gig of storage, and it's upgradable by the SD card in the back. So you can see I've got a 64 gig card in it, but it has the 8 gig. I don't actually use the 8 gig storage, I just set mine directly to record on the card, because I don't want the stop in between. You can have it so it transitions, but I don't bother, I just leave it with the 64 gig. That's about it. I'm not going to go into any technical bits because most people don't care when they buy a drone. They want to know what it's going to fly like. Does it fly well? They both do. Is the picture quality good? Yes on both. What's the battery life like? I get 16, 17 minutes out of that. And I get roughly 23 out of that. Forget what it says in the adverts. This is real time what I'm getting out. That's what I'm getting out of them. I don't mind flying in the wind so it obviously lose battery life when you're doing that but these are the things right enough of me talking i'm going to leave you some video footage i'll capture them at the bottom what you're watching but it's going to be 2.7k on the air 2.7k on the anafe it's then going to be 4k on the air and 4k on the anafe i'm not doing split screen i'm not putting a picture in picture because you can't tell anything from that so you're going to have probably a minute and a half of each one and you make your own mind up see what you like best but whatever you buy out of these two you're not going to have a problem they're both really nice drones this had, when this came out I thought it was overpriced and I now think it's a far better price and with this I didn't think this was as good as the Mavic Pro I still don't but price wise it's now in a decent in a decent place I would buy a refurb one it wouldn't bother me in the slightest provided it hadn't been dropped from a great height but remember these things have been serviced and they still come with a warranty but you can buy this new for that. So, thanks very much for watching. Enjoy the video that's coming up. Have a fantastic day.
Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please hit the like button and please do consider subscribing if you haven't already and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching.